man. Now I'm never gonna know the secret of becoming a superhero. You wanna know the secret? Come close. Oh! Make a costume, head! I swear to God, they get dumber and dumber every year. A costume? It's time for another superhero fashion show, everybody. Anyways, welcome back, true believers and all you spectacular Spidey fans to another very interesting Marvel's Avengers related video. So recently, we did receive quite a few updates pertaining to Spider-Man's inclusion within Marvel's Avengers, not just relating to the multitude of suits that he will have within his game's wardrobe, but we also got a few insights into his in-game lore, a couple interesting points relating to how exactly Spider-Man's hero event is going to operate in comparison to a hero operation, and lastly, what we can expect from the character in the weeks to come leading up to his main launch exclusively on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 on November 30th. So to begin with breaking down all this news, let's actually move over to Reddit where we did receive a very interesting factoid about Spider-Man's narrative background from a fellow developer at Crystal Dynamics known as Nick E. And as he went on to reply to a fellow user over on Reddit directly, he does state that Peter Parker is out of high school and around college age. He's been doing this longer than Kamala, but started up after A-Day, if I'm remembering the details right. So as a bit of a comparison to the most recent interpretation of Spider-Man within gaming is obviously regarding Insomniac's version, where in that game's universe, he is in fact at the time of Miles Morales, 24 years old, and has graduated college. And if we take the current timeline into consideration for that game's universe, we do know that Peter Parker has been Spider-Man for over nine years. But based on this recent description provided by Nick directly, it does sound like that Spider-Man is still currently within college in the Marvel's Avengers universe. And what's even more intriguing is that Peter Parker apparently didn't officially become Spider-Man until after the A-Day event. So I don't know if that means if Uncle Ben probably died during the Golden Gate Bridge design disaster during the opening sequence of the game, but it will be rather intriguing nonetheless to hopefully learn more about this particular iteration of Peter Parker's background as we do continue playing throughout his main event. And speaking of the event, we do have a small breakdown from one of the recent Marvel's Avengers blog posts that does fully indicate exactly what the differences are from a hero event versus a hero operation. And while it is surely going to be exciting to play as Spider-Man within the Avengers game and team up with all your favorite Marvel heroes, it does sound like based off this description that it is going to be rather short, or at the very least, shorter than what the other operations were in length. So as this section of the blog post states, as you know from our roadmap update, the Spider-Man with great power hero event comes to PlayStation players with patch 2.2 on November 30th. So what is a hero event? How does it differ from an operation? The overarching difference is scale, which impacts the way the story is told. The hero event doesn't come with a story campaign in the way an operation does. The Spider-Man hero event narrative is told through a combination of cutscenes, dialogue, and a chain of documents. There are objectives for his story that unlock these documents as they are completed, which unfolds his narrative arc and gradually reveals his journey in our original Avengers world. As a result, Spider-Man will already be unlocked for existing missions, rather than having to recruit him as a playable hero during his story via story missions. So, on the bright side, once Spider-Man is included within Marvel's Avengers come November 30th, he will be instantly added to your playable hero roster. But on the downside, it doesn't seem like his narrative arc is going to be as fully fleshed out as you would expect based on the previous hero operations that we did receive in the past, mainly with Kate Bishop and Hawkeye, as well as the massive expansion that we did receive with Black Panther. So out of all the main information that we do currently know about Spider-Man's inclusion within Marvel's Avengers thus far, this particular element about his addition does worry me the most. Still, I'm keeping my fingers crossed for the best possible outcome when it does come to Spider-Man's narrative and seeing exactly how he might grow by the time we finish his main story. Now moving on to one of the main features that Marvel's Avengers always seems to display in spades is obviously relating to the plethora of suits that you will be able to wear for each character in the game, and in this case we are talking about our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. And as you'd expect within this blog post, they did go on to showcase six main alternate suits that Spider-Man will be able to wear within Marvel's Avengers that we do know about so far, with more to obviously be featured by the time he's included in the game itself. 
itself. And for all you massive Spidey suit buffs out there, we do have some very exciting picks, with of course the classic Spider-Man suit that we all know from the Steve Ditko comics era, the Bugle Boy suit, which is pretty much Crystal's interpretation of the much more casual attire that you would expect Spider-Man to wear, with the addition of a camera on his back, which I do find pretty cool, the very much famous Mark I Spider Armor suit, also known as the Silver Spider, which in my opinion is an instant classic, as well as the Mark III Spider Armor, or more prominently known as the Ends of the Earth suit. And to follow that up, we do have some more iconic looks from Spidey's comic history for the remaining two of the Secret War suit, as well as one of the best renditions of the Spider-Man Noir suit I believe we've ever seen. Now again, if you guys know me, you'll know that I'm not too much of a massive suit connoisseur, especially given that I usually always wear the default looks whenever I play each of the characters. But in this case, I will actually give credit to Crystal for actually delivering some relatively unique looks on these classic Spider-Man costumes that we do know from his comics lore, and revitalizing them in a way that does feel distinct to the Crystal Dynamics style. And just to reiterate, while we do have these six alternate suits for Spider-Man to wear within the game, plus his current iconic suit, there will in fact be more suits added by the time November 30th arrives. And if you want to learn more about how Crystal designed each of these suits, I will leave a link to this particular Avengers blog post in the description below if you do want to check it out for yourselves. Although, I will actually read their analysis for their iconic suit given the fact that this is their own spin on the Spider-Man costume and does offer interesting reasonings as to why exactly they made it look the way it does. So as the blog post states, after zipping around with Earth's Mightiest Heroes, Spidey's world and network gets expanded exponentially. We wanted to give him a unique look that embodied this experience, one that's instantly recognizable as Spider-Man, but is more refined thanks to his newfound resources. In our iconic take, we added elements that put Peter Parker's science and engineering talents on display. His suit's fabrics are more thoughtfully built for a skyscraper swinging crime fighter, with a shark skin-like material in the red areas and a coarser, more durable one in the blue. His gloves and boots are secured with rubberized gaiters, and compression bands run throughout the suit for more optimal performance and balance. We brought in the John Romita Senior style thick eye bezels to give him a focused gaze, and updated his icon to be larger and more angular with a haptic feedback pad within the spider's body. So yeah, in my opinion, I still personally don't think that this is the greatest Spider-Man suit ever made, but it is interesting to get more of an insight as to how exactly exactly Crystal interpreted the John Romita Sr. style of Spider-Man into their own version of the suit's design. Although, in my eyes, I still think the only reference they took from Romita Sr. was in fact the lenses and the mask instead of anything else that we can see throughout the entirety of the suit. But regardless, I'm still looking forward to playing in Spidey's iconic suit as well as all of his other various costumes. And to wrap things up, everybody, the last very important piece of info that Crystal did reveal on their PlayStation blog post and the live stream itself is that we will be able to get a full-on showcase of Spider-Man's gameplay in Marvel's Avengers the day before his release in a war table on November 29th. And coming up even sooner is that next week they will reveal exactly who Spider-Man's voice actor is. Although if I had to guess personally, especially after hearing his voice more clearly, I do think that Spider-Man's voice actor within Marvel's Avengers is actually Sean Chiplock, who you may know from a game that I do thoroughly discuss on this channel when talking about Marvel's Avengers of Genshin Impact, where he does play to Luke. Or more similarly to the role of Peter Parker, he does play the mild manner Mishima within Persona 5. Spider? Man. Spider Man. We'll keep working on it, bud. Not like you're the only Mishima? One. What did you do to me? That Oya lady's nothing but a roaring drunkard! How do you know her? Where did you even meet a lush like this? Now, based on what we heard from Spider-Man's voice actor in his reveal trailer, it does sound a bit similar to Tom Holland in retrospect, but I am still looking forward to hearing more of his performance in full. And with all that said, everyone, that's the video that I have for you today, and please let me know all your thoughts in the comments section down below. What do you think about all this information relating to Marvel's Avengers, and which element of Spider-Man's inclusion are you looking forward to the most? Are you excited for his gameplay mechanics, his events narrative, his suits, or anything else that you could possibly think of? Let me know all your thoughts everybody leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy and for more marvel's avengers and spider-man videos like this in the future and without further ado peace out